So here I am in Iceland with a bunch of Vikings right now. We just drove through a blizzard, through a whiteout. Here we are at some geological formation. You got Norway, Iceland, Iceland, Sweden, and Sweden. You know, there are times where you get a little excited. You are thrown into an ecstatic frenzy. You have an explosion, an eruption of sorts. I was sitting here and I forgot that Norway even existed. He was just sitting here being hammered drunk, just absolutely silent, and then suddenly he just pops up like a geezer. Every now and then he just he erupts. Look at him. <laughs> the shape on Norway. <laughs> So we're continuing, spending the day with the Vikings here. This is like this is like a trek to Mordor with all with with dwarves or something. This is crazy. I've been with these Vikings for two days now. I still haven't even been raped or pillaged. I can't figure it out. They're not living up to to their standard. All the stereotypes are they're a lie. A raped or pillaged a thing. In two days. Our adventures led us to some massive waterfall. This is a meeting of us. We're in a locker room. We're about to go hop into a geothermal pool. We're about to get naked together. And some of you guys, you know, I've known you for years and you still don't trust me enough to get naked with me. We're going to go get, we're going to get naked together. Then we're going to get into the pool and we're going to eat shark. Got a box of frozen shark. All right, so here we are. We're in a geothermal hot pool with all the Vikings. And, uh, we're eating the shark, and I just realized after I ate about seven pieces of shark that they age it for six months. This shark tastes like pure ammonia. It tastes like what urine and floor cleaner smell like mixed together. <laughs> I had no idea that this was rotten shark that I was eating. All right, here we are now. We're at the edge of a volcano. This thing could erupt at any moment. We don't know when it's going to spew. I don't know who's going to see this video, if I'm going to be able to put this out for just anybody to see because some people, their conscience would be, would be severely, se <laughs> would be severely compromised by this. But we're in a restaurant and can you just guess what's on the menu? Have a look at that. That's right. Whale. Right here. Now I'm having to show you the menu because you're not even you're not even gonna believe me here. You can get um, raw sashimi whale meat, which I plan to try. You can get a whale pepper steak, which I also intend to try. And my only bit of also you can have puffin, which is a protected or endangered seabird in America, but apparently it's an appetizer here. And the only other thing that I, I wish I had a big enough stomach for, but I can only eat so many things, you can get horse. You can buy a horse right here. So it was a choice between a whale and a horse. And I feared... When am I ever going to have an opportunity to eat a horse in a restaurant? And yet, when am I ever going to have an opportunity to eat a whale in a restaurant? I remember in the 80s, when I was a, I was a, a wee little student in elementary school, and we did a, a project on saving the whales. <laughs> All I'm 
saying right now is save me a portion. Okay, so me and back again. Uh, we need to understand a little bit from a local what's going on here with okay, the whale. So, so what what tastes better, like a whale or a horse? Uh, whale. I, I, I mean, a horse is a gamble. You you sometimes you get a good one and uh, it can't be really good. It depends on how it's cooked, but. Veil is definitely better than bull, it, but it tastes kind of the same, but you want to get it because it's more rare, uh, it has a, can have a unique taste. Veil is the best. I'm back again. Look, there's a fact. If this video goes online, I'm going to get in a lot of trouble for this. I didn't even realize that there was this show, Whale Wars, and that I just found out that Geyser, the Norwegian, <laughs> he also eats whale. Oh, we found this out right now. I didn't know you could eat whale in Norway. And that the whale wars, the whale warriors attack their ships. <sighs> the problem is I know this is going to end up on YouTube. <laughs> Even though I'm telling myself not to post it right now. The main reason why they still kill the whales. Wait, 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 wait. Back up from the beginning about the whale. It's a big whale. It's a big whale. It's, 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 like, it's not a small whale. Like, uh, you can mistake it for a fish. This is a, pro this, this is a proper whale. How many, how many meters? Six meters. Six meters, and that's roughly about how many feet? 18, 18, 18, 18, 18 feet. feet. And, they and they have a very tight quota. That, uh, so they have to be really, really careful. Careful not to yeah, ex exceed or how do you say yeah kill kill too many because there's it's a very low quota and um, the main reason why they still kill the whales here in Iceland is because all the tourists want to eat them and I have to add now I didn't I, I'm not going to eat the whale I'm going to eat a horse instead and that's mainly because I haven't eaten horse and all the horses here in Iceland that they serve have died of natural causes. And just to clarify, I'm helping him out with his conscience a little bit, okay? I'm going to have a bite of his horse. He's going to have a bite of my whale, but he didn't actually buy the whale. So he didn't actually kill the whale. He just took a bite of it. Now, I didn't kill the whale either, but I am going to eat him. Okay, this is Puffin, an endangered seabird. And this is whale sashimi, mink whale. All right, here it is. This is my first bite ever of whales. Whale sushi. This is raw whale. Matter of fact, it's probably my first bite of raw mammal, period. Mm. It tastes like nostalgia. Okay, here's the seabird. You know, these little puffins, these little birds, they're cute little birds. They're like the little toucans of the sea. When I lived in Alaska, um, everything was named after the puffins, and the bird watchers would come and watch the protected puffins in Alaska. Did you like it? No, no. When I. I guess I didn't catch the map. This is so wrong. Horse. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. You're looking at horse. What, what's, what's the, the whale keeps coming. We've got whale, whale, whale. I mean, that's horse. Whale, whale, whale. It is the main course. I dare say this is not the first whale that Norway's eaten. It's old hat. Norway old hat. This is my first bite of a cooked whale. I have in my mouth my first ever bite of horse. I wonder if it's Arabian, Clydesdale, likely Icelandic, I would imagine. Mm. It is. It's like cow. It is the big famous Church of Iceland. I'm gonna go in there and confess my sins for eating an endangered species. Some of you expect me to teach a little bit on the Jesus trip today. Others of you probably only want to know what my whale tasted like. As I said, it tasted like nostalgia. It tasted like old ships with tar ropes and hand-stitched masts. 
I would say it tasted like brass cartography instruments, wooden decks, and the pleasures of days gone by, oil lamps, peg legs, and men who sailed far from home. All right, well, I'll give you a little teach. Before everyone gets in a self-righteous frenzy, though, just so you know, it was only a minky whale, all right? It was not a blue whale or a sperm whale. They're not endangered, threatened, or even near threatened. They're listed of least concern, all right? Now, as I went into the church and meditated today, I was thinking of Jonah and the whale. Jesus said, a wicked generation seeks after a sign, but the only sign that this generation would be given was that of Jonah and the whale. This is the sign. It looked like utter defeat. Their savior swallowed up by death and drugged down to the grave for three days. Yet he was spit out again in resurrection. Just as Jonah was swallowed by the whale, so was the son of man swallowed by death. So often, you know, we're seeking something some kind of sign, seeking some kind of miracle breakthrough in this life. And really, so often, it's just to assure us that things are going to be okay, that we're safe, that God is for us. And, and it sometimes only looks like, in reality, we're facing defeat. 1 Corinthians 15 says, When the perishable puts on the imperishable, and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. That whale that swallowed our Lord was death, and that whale is going to be swallowed up itself. It is going to be eaten. Death itself, the grave, will be swallowed up. Death itself is both endangered and it's listed as least concern. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? Now, death does not stand as our Savior to liberate us from our pain at the end of life, but it does stand as the evening of time wherein it is swallowed up by resurrection, all of the hurt, all of the heartache, all of the collective pain and death and bondage that this transitory life in all of human history has ever experienced will give way to resurrection, to renaissance, to restoration, a new heaven and a new earth, both now and to come. You know, on the one hand, we may not see the full manifest reality of all that our resurrection life uh, entails until that final resurrection. We can rest assured that if we face hardship, the Lord is ultimately going to pull us through. Okay, And yet the fact that makes resurrection life real for us is not our own death, our own suffering or sorrow, but Christ himself. He swallowed up our death. He ate our whale. And, we're, and we were sucked down into the belly, into the depths of the grave with him. And, and then we were spit out. And the thing that makes our new life real was his resurrection. Okay, so look, here's my point. As charismatics, you know, we often get hung up of, on, on the issue of momentary victories, trying to get our healing, our finance, our breakthrough. And yes, we have access to every bit of it all thanks to what Jesus has already done. We have died together with him. But let's not get worked up and too fearfully introspective in those moments when we don't yet see the immediate victories in our life because there is still an ultimate resurrection to come. Charismatics, we focus so much on getting everything now that we forget that ultimately there is an eternity of bliss beyond this temporary life. The whale of death is ultimately going extinct and we will gobble it down with a little wasabi singing glory be the name of the Lord. <laughs> okay, look, it is good to expect all the benefits of resurrection right here, right now. But if you are facing tough times, there's no need to get superstitious, to start looking for signs. Christ's death and resurrection is permanent proof that we will all be raised into ultimate glory. Sometimes we need a little reminder that this life is but a fleeting shadow compared to to the infinite measure of eternal glory to come. Okay, so that's me from Iceland. You guys have an amazing week. And look, don't miss these important upcoming announcements. 
Hey, I'm John Crowder. I'm either a real priest or I play one on YouTube, but I have an announcement that's going to blow some of you guys out of the water. Many of you missed our deadline for Canaan New Wine Seminary, but we still have room. So we are reopening and extending the application deadline to March 15th. So if you had dreams of spending a whole summer with us here in Portland, Oregon, it is not too late. We have Francois de Toy, C. Baxter Kruger, Steve McVeigh, many other amazing speaker. So come, take a sabbatical summer of rest with us, drinking in the new wine, delving into the gospel of grace. If this is something that you wanted to do, I would encourage you strike while the iron is hot because this is your only chance to dive in in person to the Cana community because it is our last summer of hosting a real-time school. So visit us online at cana.co. And if you don't have the time or the money, look, you're not the only one. Take a step of faith. We believe the Lord will hook you up. It is a good desire to want to drink in the word. So get in that application and your deposit right now and we will see you this summer in Portland. of mystical schools coming across North America through the summer. I'll be in Chico, Northern California this March, and then later in the month I'll be in Las Vegas, Nevada. I'm coming to Fort Collins, Colorado April 24th through 26th, then Jacksonville, Florida May 15th through 17th. I'll be in Chicago May 29th through 31st, and then Grand Rapids, Michigan in the month of June. In the month of July, I'm coming to Calgary, Alberta, Canada, and then you can join us in Phoenix, Arizona, July 31st through August 2nd. I'll also be in Chattanooga, Tennessee, August 14th through 16th. Find them all online at thenewmystics.com slash schools. See you there. For the first time in six years, we're opening one of our Middle East missions to applicants who'd like to go where most Christians fear to tread. This June 2015, we'll travel to Amman, Jordan to host a gathering for many surrounding Arab nations, sharing the gospel, releasing a tangible atmosphere of glory, signs, wonders, miracles with visitors from Jordan, Syria, Lebanon, and beyond. We'll also provide hands-on outreach to the poorest of the poor from war-torn Syria as we visit refugees camps where more than two million people have been displaced by the ongoing civil war in that nation. There, we'll feed the poor, pray for the sick, host daily relief outreaches. This is a specialized trip that's not for the faint of heart. Christian ministries often persecuted in the Arab world, but there is so much glory for those who dare to dive deep into the danger zone. So please only apply if you have an appetite for risk and thrive on the unknown. Because of the nature of this trip, space really will be limited and it's a first come basis for those who apply early. The situation in the Syrian refugee camps is dire and we want to share the love of Jesus not just in word but deed. Even if you don't want to join the trip but you want to participate with a donation, a gift to the relief efforts, you can make a contribution online. Find out more and remember the sign up deadline is March 1st. Visit thenewmystics.com slash danger.